Hey everybody, Model Man here with another paint booth status update. Number 21 or 22, I think. I just spent the last 10, 12 days painting this object here, a replica of an X-Wing fighter pilot helmet. 20 plus layers of paint. I think 10 or 11 colors overall. Uh, all the time was needed in between layers so that it could mask appropriately and continue going. There's also a lot of sanding in between layers as well. And I haven't even put any dirt washes on here like black, green, or brown, which would uh, then stain these colors. So while that is a step I will need to do, it's not something I'm going to be doing immediately. And as such, this makes for a really good assessment of how this booth is performing. It's, anyhow, it's just about a year. Last August, July is when this was initially commissioned. Since then, I've done a couple major pieces of work. Uh, this helmet, torpedo tubes for my car. My wife has done some painting in here for a few days with uh, some really big spray colors. Uh, what else? Some Jupiter work some Godzilla work, one or two other projects in there, I think. Anyhow, with 12 days of paint, a newly installed filter over the fan to help protect it. A few new things have happened up there. You can see this uh, orange staining going on in these two places, and then this whole area has really gotten darkened up, though it may not show it on video. But the plastic itself looks relatively clean as do the LEDs. So I'm going to scrape down the backside. All the floor in here needs to be sanded. You can see how much dust is on the walls back here. It's just a real mess. I do all my sanding in here, all the painting. It's really, really handy. It's really handy. I'm still debating the utility of having these holes. I suppose for the moment they're actually handy because if things do get cluttered I can do a quick brush down and all the dirt will go into the booth the bay instead of remaining on the surface and gathering in the corners so that's one good thing for the utility of it however it also means stuff is dripping down there with additional cleaning to be done undersides as well so it's a 50 50 there are a couple innovations that I'll be implementing on this quick clean and upgrade I'll be pulling the ceiling off, unhooking the fans, vacuuming those out, seeing how those look. I'll be cutting them down so the ducts come off. I'll probably clean out the box in there, which has been done a few times now over the year. But the ceiling has never come off yet. Uh, we'll clean down there. We'll pull the booth off of the stand. We'll pull the table up check for any cleaning down there. I'm going to install this fluorescent light down here so I can see what's going on. Uh, I think there may be a loose wire over here that I gotta fix as well. One upgrade that I should do but I don't know if I will is you can see the difference in white balance here. It's daylight outside so these LEDs match that. However, at night the white balance doesn't match and I'm kinda screwed in that regard. So the alternative I have is under here you can see that there are strips of LEDs going on. I'll run parallel strips in warm white so that I can flip the switch because right now I've got two banks of lights one going to moody blue and that one is not all that useful. It's moody, it's nice. Having the lights back there is kind of cool actually. It looks like three rows of LEDs would have fully lit the backs up. There's no worry about uh, paint really getting on the LED strips because they're attached to the back side of the wall, not the far side of the outer wall. So that light you see is bouncing off of the back. Over here I have a strip of foil so it looks more specific. However, down there is the way to have gone. It might even take four rows of LEDs to light it truly properly and get all the edges nice. But anyhow, so I would lose function on those unless I route them to another switch over here.
and I'll do a review of the control panels here of what's going on I'm really glad I installed these door handles here to protect those switches I've seen it on like uh, fighter jets and things like that and I was like oh you know that might be a good idea they happen to be the perfect height I looked out real good on that most of all right now I want to document the carnage going on because it is a right mess like I said there's like 20 layers of paint on these walls here one viewer was worried that the walls would get dirty and I should put paper up but really all I do is belt sand them down and uh, spray them over with white if I'm really concerned about seeing white in fact for a uh, smoke test which I should do with the new uh, situation going on is I'll paint all these flat black hmm hmm <laughs> hmm it's amazing how things can build up and the thing I've noticed is even though I'm painting over in this corner here certainly all of this is getting paint as well so I need some kind of barrier protection going on here and I've got an idea for uh, basically a walled off container about the height of spray cans so I can tuck them underneath it and uh, maybe two levels so I can stack things I'll have to do it out as I do it out but that's the basic idea I have to re-block the bottom of this because right now there's just a sheet of paper under there but water does spill around here so I do need to replace that. There are tools under there so this makes a really good tool bay too. And I do need a wall to segregate the two sides and keep this area clean for tools and this area dirty for uh, you know just collection purposes. I also need a spare container down here for my airbrush so that can be protected when I'm doing this kind of thing. I had thought that I could hang it out in its normal spot but now this place is too much of a mess. And we'll see, I put some protection measures underneath down there so we'll see how those look when I get to it in a few minutes. So I guess the basic idea is that I'll be cleaning all of this out, sand it all down, vacuum all that, and then once that is all safe and secure, start taking it apart up here going with the hoses. My biggest dilemma is how to store these things because as you can see give them an inch and they take a foot basically. They're very difficult to manage once you get uh, once they get away from you and while this tape was certainly a good half measure for a while it's definitely done now. And so, one full vacuum cleaning later. Some really nice paint work here. One thing I always wanted to do as an art student was to save my painting palettes because they eventually became their own works of right, supporting the main painting I was doing at the time. So it's nice to see the same is still true. Underneath, let's have a look at that. Now the bottom needs to be vacuumed, and then it's a pretty deep layer of mess. Then over here, the paper is holding up. Maybe I'll double layer it. You can see where there is a water spill. This is pretty clean. Not great, but definitely clean. So a lot of this dirt comes from directly above and very little spreads all along here. So renovation, project upgrade, 
today is to add a strip of something to block that off so it's self-contained on this side and that'll be a permanent fixture there but one other potential thing I may do is to create a riser so that it's an additional four inches higher so that I can actually stand at the booth right now I kinda designed it so I'd be sitting but I found that most of the work I've done so far standing is much nicer and if I'm sitting at the bench gluing or doing electronics it's nice to have a third option so the hose is definitely the worst for the wear and I'll make a small containment area here for the airbrush so that doesn't have to travel far the hose can go underneath and be protected down there the airbrush itself I imagine is probably in good shape being wrapped up in this rubber glove there's probably a little dirt on here from the painting. Well, surprisingly little. But nevertheless, that needs to go self-contained. One downside to creating a uh, storage bin on top here is that I wouldn't be able to flip this panel up. However, what I'm thinking is slicing it somewhere around here and then hinging it. So the storage bay contained there. I can lift this up, get to the tools underneath, and uh, leave it like that. Probably put the peg holders in the back and the more utilitarian stuff up front. I think that's going to add a really big dynamic to this. And being portable, I'll be able to move it out of there if I need the space overall. 12 cubic feet total, 2 by 2 by 3 feet might be able to hear a little clicking on the fan there. I'm going to take a look at that when I pull the ceiling off. It's probably just paint dust from previous uh, painting efforts that didn't get fully cleaned out. But I'm really interested in analyzing the performance of everything going on up here, pulling the ceiling off. I don't know that I'll detach the fan, though, from the ceiling, because that would actually be a serious effort. So we'll see how this goes. Next up, vacuum all this out, get this secure. And I should probably sand the walls down at this point and the floor. So yeah, actually. Time to sand this with 100 grit and then do the vacuum with the stuff underneath. <laughs> 